sure to check out Ageless Geeks for your figures and collectibles. So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 18 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Revolt Tech Amazing Yamaguchi Deathstroke. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look at the box. So we do of course get the basic style box when it comes to the Amazing Yamaguchi line. So we do get the one right there on the front of the box. On the left side does say Figure Complex Amazing Yamaguchi powered by Revolt Tech. We do get a very cool image of the figure. says Series Number 11 Deathstroke. And DC. And then here is the bottom of the box with the barcode and blah 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 stuff nobody cares about. Then we do get a cool comic book image of Slade Wilson there. Then here is the top of the box. We do get another comic book image which looks pretty damn cool. Then here is the one side of the box with a tiny image of the Deathstroke figure. Then here is the other side of the box with a really cool image of the figure. Then the back of it does show a bunch of really awesome poses you can get the figure into along with all of the accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure open and take a closer look at this character that we all should be thankful for because we wouldn't have a Deadpool if it wasn't for him. And for anybody who is curious to see the backdrop and what is on the sides of the box, so on the top says Deathstroke, on the bottom we do get a comic image of Deathstroke, then here is the other side, we do get two profile images of Deathstroke, one with the mask and one without. And then the backdrop here, which is my favorite part about these boxes, we get some beautiful artwork of Deathstroke with Harley Quinn on the bottom there, so that's that. Let's continue on. Alrighty, take it a closer detailed look, and right off the bat, I just want to say this is now my favorite Amazing Yamaguchi figure in the line, and I'm not just saying that because it's the newest release. Revil Tag constantly updates their figures with each new release, and it definitely shows in this Deathstroke. As you can see, I have him in a regular neutral standing pose, and it looks good. It doesn't look bad like some of their other figures, like how Spider-Man would look if he's standing in a pose like this. You know what I mean? So... Really glad that, that Revil Tech keeps updating uh, their figures with each release, and now I have a lot of faith in their Gambit figure. So, one issue though, as is you can see, some paint rubbed right off on the midsection right there because it does rub up on the crotch piece, the belt, so some of the paint came off, so you do have to be careful of that. Another annoying thing that's very annoying about this figure is his head pops off way too easily, and it's... Damn it! And it's so damn irritating. I don't know why it pops off the joint so easily. I guess uh, they didn't make the uh, peg big enough or the peg hole a little smaller. I know if I throw like some crazy glue in there, let it dry, it'll uh, definitely stay on there much better. But the head sculpt, I, I think, looks fantastic. Beautiful sculpt and paint all throughout it. Very clean paintwork. And the sculpt of it just looks great. I do really dig that that very dark blue. And then the back, we do have his tie. They put it on the bottom part of his head here instead of the upper part. So some people might not like that. I'm not too fond of it, but it, I mean, it still works, you know. And then we do get a scarf here, which is also articulated. The sculpt of that looks pretty cool. Same with the uh, tie right there. My favorite thing about this figure is this like fish scale looking armor. That looks beautiful. Excellent job on that, man. And, and I dig that silver paint that they chose as well we have his harness over here with some uh magazines in them and everything very nice work on that very nice sculpt on the muscle definition as well his shoulder pads look cool what we have in there smoke grenades or something and there's the back he does have this double ball peg on there which is for his accessories and i'll show you that next but very nice sculpt and paint all throughout the back of the figure right there very cool looking and then the arms turned out pretty cool we do get that same armor like on the chest on the bicep that looks dope and then we do get the gauntlets on the arms, which look pretty cool. Very nice sculpt and paint on them. Same with on the straps going around the uh, inside of the arm right there. And then we do get some pouches here, which I'm guessing has more magazines in them. Some grenades on the back of his belt. I feel like they could have added like a wash or something on the orangey red color there. And these two front pouches on each side are articulated, which we will go over later. Then the legs here look great. Very nice sculpt work on the muscle definition. Very comic book looking. Then we do get the straps for the, uh, the holster for the gun on the right side. Then on the left side, we have the straps for the holster for his knife. And the straps look pretty cool. I mean, they didn't paint the buckle silver or anything maybe they wanted to make it brown i'm not sure we do get the knee pads which are articulated i mean the joints are hidden really well on death stroke especially the shoulder joints with the shoulder pads here so that is definitely cool and then the lower legs i love the way the boots look how it kind of looks like they're 
overlapping each other. I really dig the way that looks. And we get some straps for his boots on the back there. And then the feet turned out pretty cool too. I mean, uh, overall, Revol Tech did do a very nice job. We do get some sculpted treads on the bottom of the feet right there. I mean, the detail turned out really well on this Deathstroke. And I, I definitely can't be any more happy with how it turned out. And like I said, I, I feel like they're getting better and better with each release as they update them. But anyway, let's continue on. Moving on to the accessories. This Deathstroke is included with a ton of awesome stuff. I don't think they could have given us any more awesome accessories so first and foremost we do get the Revol Tech stand here with a bunch of peg holes in the base the arm the clamp then we do get two extra double ball hinge joints I do wish they included at least one extra wrist joint but it's always a huge plus when we get extra joints for the figure so we do get that stuff and then we do get the two interchangeable heads and starting on the left we do get the masked head sculpt which is the one that does come on the figure out of the packaging and as I said before they did do an excellent job with that and that one is my favorite out of the two then on the right we do get the unmasked Slade Wilson head sculpt which also turned out fantastic the paint and sculpt looks great all throughout it does have a very comic book type look to it and i do like the way they did the hair it does have a very subtle black wash in it but it is like a metallic -y silver his little beard looks pretty good the eye patch the scar over his eye looks great they just did an all-around great job on both head sculpts and it's very easy to swap them out i'm going to show you how to do that right now and swapping the heads for the amazing yamaguchi figures is pretty basic for death stroke here it's a little different though so when you want to put the unmasked head on you take the masked one off, just pop it off the joint. You also have to take off the lower or mid neck piece with the tie on it. Then you take the unmasked head and you just peg that in like so. As simple as that. So we do get the interchangeable heads. And then we also get his insane arsenal. So we do get two grenades, a knife, a handgun, an automatic, his bow staff, two swords with the two sheaths. And then we do get these pieces here which you can holster some of his weapons so we do get the two grenades here and they look fine they do have a peg on them and then his open hands do have a peg hole on the palm so you can have him hold the grenades it looks like they are painted but uh the sculpt of him look pretty good it does look like a comic book style grenade so we get that and we do get his little knife here and this turned out really nice i dig the silver for the uh the blade right there the paint that they used i like the serrated edge and then the handle turned out pretty nice and you can holster that in his sheath for his knife on his hip and then we do get his handgun which you could also holster but on the other hip and it looks pretty good it's just molded in a black plastic they could have added a little bit of paint work on it but i mean the sculpt of it i think turned out pretty cool i'll show you how to holster those shortly then we do get the automatic which i believe is an m16 i i don't know anything about guns so i'm not entirely sure but it is just molded in a black plastic just like the handgun the sculpt of it i think looks really cool and you can have him holster this as well so we get that and then we do get his bow staff which i feel like should have been a little bit longer but i mean it looks pretty cool i like the silver that they used for it so we get that and then we do get my favorite accessories which are his swords and then we do get the two sheaths as well and i love that silver paint for the blade there and i like how the blade kind of gets wider the more it goes to the uh the the sharp end right there and then i do like the cross guard and the handle that gold paint looks pretty good and the sheath is just molded in a black plastic and the way you get it in there you just slide it in like so and then there you go as simple as that if you flip it upside down they're gonna fall out though so we do get that and then we do get these three pieces so you can holster his swords gun and bow staff i'll show you how to use those along with holstering some of his accessories right now and the way you holster all of his weapons is very simple we'll start with the handgun and the knife so the knife goes on the left hip you just put that in there and it does stay in there securely enough it won't fall out or anything like that and then you take the handgun and this one doesn't stay in the right hip holster securely enough so if you do flip them upside down just like the swords it will fall out which kind of sucks but just don't flip them upside down and to get them to hold on to a grenade you get the open hand with the peg hole on the palm and you just peg the grenade into the peg hole come on you busted and there you go as simple as that now the way you get him to holster his m16 or the automatic whatever the hell it's called you take the gun of course then you take this peg right here this one's meant for the gun and you put the peg through the trigger hole right there and then you take this double ball hinge off his back we have the peg hole 
right there so all you would do is just peg that in like so and then there you go you could have him holster his automatic there now if you want him to holster his bow staff i wish you could have him holster the bow staff the automatic and the swords at the same time but you can if you really wanted to you could have him holster the swords and the bow staff the swords you would put up here and the bow staff you could peg in here but i broke the stand off in that pouch right there so that does kind of suck so you do take the clip with the peg on it for the bow staff you peg that in and then you just clip the bow staff and they're like so and then there you go as simple as that now for the swords here get that double ball hinge peg that back in and this has like a little indent for the ball peg so it can just rest in there then you take this piece here you peg that in and then you take the swords you peg this one over here and then peg this one on the other side and then you just crisscross them and then there you go as simple as that and you can articulate it around if you really wanted to but I mean that looks dope once you have that holstered on there so we do get all of that awesome stuff and then we finally get six alternate hands and starting on the top here we do get a pair of fists of course which do come on the figure out of the packaging then we do get a pair of gripping hands which is meant for him to grip onto the guns and the swords and knife and everything then we do get a pair of open hands you can see the peg hole as I showed you before and that's where you peg in the grenades and we had some beautiful sculpt and paint throughout all six hands the only issue is when you're swapping the hands the wrist joint tends to pop off with the hand which does get a bit irritating but anyway that is all the awesome accessories included with the terminator let's keep moving on with the rest of the review shall we now for the height of slade wilson to the very top of his head it looks like he's about six and a half inches tall and then here he is compared to the Revolt Tech Amazing Yamaguchi Batman, the SH Fig Yards, the Dark Knight Batman, the DC Icons Harley Quinn, and the Mezco 112 DX Joker. And I think he scales really well with the Revolt Tech Batman. They're about the same height. And then here he is compared to the SH Fig Yards Suicide Squad Harley Quinn and Deadshot, and the Mafex, the Dark Knight Rises Bane, and the Justice League Aquaman. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectible Smoke, the SH Figure Arts Sage Mode Naruto, the Mafex Justice League Batman, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. And he can work with this Batman as well. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awakened Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and this is definitely the high point to this figure here. So the scarf is articulated. It's on a tiny ball peg, so it can swivel and hinge up and down. Then the tie is just on a swivel, which is a bit disappointing. I wish it was on a tiny ball, ball hinge, but I, I don't think they, they could have made one that small, I'm guessing. Now the neck here, the head is on a barbell type joint, as you can see right there. So that you can move. You can get them to look directly up. So... Definitely no issues there. Going down, he just pretty much looks straight ahead. You do get the pivot at the upper neck, and then it does swivel there as well. The lower neck joint goes forward really well. It doesn't, oh, actually, it does go back a little bit. So <laughs> with both joints, the scarf gets in the way of his chin, so you can't really, like, tuck it under it to get some good looking down poses. I mean, you, you, you got to work with it. You can get it sometimes, but sometimes the, the scarf can get irritating but with both joints you can get him to look down that much if you tuck his chin in there he looks down a little bit more and then looking up you can get him to look up a little bit more using the lower neck you get a little bit of pivot then it does swivel as well now the torso here I love that Revil Tech is using the ball pegs I don't like when they use the ratchety Revil Tech joints at the torso so we do have a torso joint and a waist joint so the torso goes forward really well and then also goes back really well. And the sculpt continues under there. Stupid head. Uh, you do get a little pivot there. It's very minimal though. And you really can't get it to swivel there. The waist here does go back a lot. And it does go forward really well. So no issues with crunching at the torso. And then going back with both, both joints goes back that, about that much. You do get much better pivot at the waist, and that's where you also get the better swivel. So combining both those joints, you do get some very nice 
articulation then the pouches like I said are on a barbell type joint they do have articulation so you can move them out the way of the legs so they don't get in the way when you're articulating them now for the arms here the shoulder pad pieces are on a barbell type joint as well so they can shift up and down they can pivot move up and down and swivel as well then we do have these crazy side torso joints here so they can move up and down or in and out and they can swivel and they can also pivot as well so th those joints definitely are useful then we do have the uh, double ball peg at the shoulder here and the arms go out about that much they do go up and down and if you want his arms up just shift the joint up and you can move the shoulder pad along with it and you can get the swivel where it connects into the bicep right there then the elbows some of my favorite elbow joints a single jointed elbow that bends in all the way and then where the joint connects into the forearm it is on a ball peg so you can move that all around and it does swivel where it connects into the bicep as well and then for the wrists we do have the ball hinge so it does swivel and hinges back and forth so beautiful movement so far throughout the entire figure and this piece on the back is articulated it's for his sheath and i believe you could use it for his bow staff and his gun as well now for the legs here we do have the wacky weevil tech leg joints here my right thigh swivel seems to be stuck on mine so i'm gonna have to show you with the left one here so you can get death stroke to kick forward more than 90 degrees so that's definitely good you can make it go out more but it's gonna kick out to the side and then the legs do go back i mean you can get them back pretty much almost all the way you just have to work with both those joints there the swivel and the hip joint and then we do get the thigh swivel there and let's see if he can Jean-Claude Van Damme it which he definitely can my joint is stuck over here so I can't really get the leg all the way out there but if I can get the joint unstuck it could definitely go out 90 degrees so he can definitely Jean-Claude Van Damme it I mentioned we had the angled thigh swivel there then we do have ball hinges on the knee pads so they can hinge forward and back and they can swivel as well and then we do have the single jointed knee that bends back all the way it can swivel where it connects into the upper leg and the lower leg as well and then the ankles here well actually we do have a boot cut swivel which i believe is a ball a ball peg i mean it can swivel oh no it's 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 a hit ball hinge my mistake so it can hinge up and down and i do like i mean maybe we don't really need that joint but it's definitely cool having it there and then these shin pieces are just they move up and down a little bit that's all but it, it that's really there just so it doesn't get in the way of the ankle joints but the ankle joints do swivel they hinge up really well hinge all the way down and even where the ankle joint connects into the foot i love these joints just like with the elbow joints it is connected with a ball peg so you can move the foot around on that joint as well and you get more than a 90 degree bend ankle pivot so i don't want to hear anybody complaining about you can't get this figure in certain poses because with all the articulation this death stroke has you're going to be able to get them into any type of death stroke like poses and i'm about to show you some of those awesome poses right about now but anyway that is my review of the Revil Tech amazing yamaguchi death stroke hope you enjoyed it if i had to rate this figure between a one through ten i definitely have to give it an even nine if you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure i did have mine imported from japan from ami ami and i'm pretty sure my buddy from ageless geeks will be getting this in stock any day now so you can check at ageholesgeeks.com if you can't find it on there i would recommend going through their instagram or facebook page we'll put more information in the description below and if you would like to support the channel don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell and if you liked it feel free to give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it oh well i guess you didn't like it but thanks for watching i will see you later
complex amazing Yamaguchi powered by Rebel Tech. Then we do get a little bit and blah, 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 blah. So we do get the one right there on the front of the box. On the left side, does see a pre hey, hey, no, keep doing it. Damn it. So the head here is connected to, oh, uh, tell you, wah, yeah. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review, shall we? Damn it. We do get the unmasked Slade Wilson head sculpt with, with, bleh, bleh. Very comic booky looking and ju just. Ju <laughs> and to get him to grip on to a grenade, you get the open hand. Damn you, my butterfingers! I feel like having a butterfinger now. 